thought you said you don't bake. <laughs> As you can tell by my physique, I eat a lot of baking. <laughs> The biscocho, it's very technical, and there's nowhere to hide. My food dream is to open up a dessert bar. I make pastries all the time, but not in the confines of 65 minutes. So it's going yesterday. Now, the key with a good English breakfast is really timing. Cook the English muffin. Never made an English muffin before. You cook it on the stovetop. It's a tricky one. Fried bacon that is crispy, eggs that sunny side up, not overcooked, not undercooked, hand sauteed mushrooms, blood sausage. Oh! And if you have the heat too high, that blood sausage, under all that heat and pressure, can simply explode. No! The blood sausage exploded. This could cost me the competition. They look like ground beef. I'm toast. Toast. Don't sweat it, dude. Just think of the next right thing, OK? Let's get everything Just else right. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. everything else right. That's yep. it. I am not ready to go home. 15 minutes. You only have 15 minutes left. The most difficult element of the country is blind cooking it. It looks really good. Chanel is the first one to open up a pressure cooker. I'm burning my fingers. Push through it. Yeah, push through it, bud. This thing just totally screwed me. And I look into the pressure cooker, it's it's soup. You gotta you gotta reduce the hell out of that right now. So I decided to just jam the lid back on, cook it as long as I possibly can. Looks like someone's going to school without breakfast today, Alvin. Five minutes! We want breakfast served in five minutes. Oh, that's too hot, too hot, too hot. My pen is too hot. I have to take them off the heat and try to salvage them the best I can. There's just no time left. Does that look good to you? All right. Ouch. Oh, no, look at Chanel's uh, biscochos. They look more like breadsticks. Kanji, check. English breakfast, check. One more minute! You have one more minute left. One minute, guys. Just get it down, guys. I still haven't even opened up this pressure cooker again. <laughs> so I'm definitely worried it's not even going to get done. Hot, 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 hot. 10 seconds, guys. Ten, Come on. 9, Come on. 8, Come on. 7, Come on. 6, 5, 4, you got this. 3, on, 2, two on. 1. Hands up. Hey, Chrissy. Hello, chef. Oh my god, chef Alvin's going to taste my first ever congee. I'm feeling the pressure on that one. Have you made any kanji in your time? Oh, no. First time you made it, eh? Yes. I don't believe you. Oh. Because you got the taste spot on. Oh, my gosh. Thank okay? you, Chef. You got the saltiness coming from the soy sauce, acidity coming from the vinegar. The Shaoxing wine is going to give it a nice complexity. And then the star anise hits just slightly, not too much. The only thing is the, the chili sauce maybe is a little bit messy, but this is the kanji that I can eat over and over again. It means the world to me, chef. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think, Josh? I think all the elements are there. Is this all the chickens there? No, there should be three pieces in there somewhere. I will take your word for <laughs> it. The kanji is too thin. And what happened is the topping has sunken in. But you know what? Taste is it's king, yeah. It's a little bit on the light side, to the extent almost blend. So remember, taste your food. Yes, chef. Eugene. Chef. You got the texture spot on. Thank you, chef. But you gave us two shim. The replication only calls for one. The seasoning, good. Only problem, balance. Balance. Too much star anise, and you get a bad, bitter aftertaste mm -hmm. at the end. It's overpowering. Yes, chef. Hi, Chanel. Hey, chef. How do you think you did on the kanji? I'm pretty happy with it. Overall, it looks pretty good. 
Consistency is very important for kanji. And I think you nailed it. Thank you, sir. The taste of all the different elements, it's all there. And it's good. But a touch on the light side. Oh, okay. okay. It's a very, very good effort. Thank you, chef. <laughs> I definitely think my kanji's on the bottom. But the classic uh, English breakfast, uh, I feel the most confident about it. Right now, it's a game of inches. Hi there, Chrissy. Hello, chef. I do love a good, proper English breakfast. <laughs> English muffin. Great color on the outside, and that light, pillowy, fluffy filling in the center. Very nice. You have a good piece of the black sausage there. I can't resist a little of that blood sausage with the English muffin. That's a great way to start the day. Two eggs, sunny side up. The pan, I would say, was a little too hot because yes. you could see a little of the browning at the edge of that yes. egg white. The pan doesn't have to be very hot. The albumin, the egg white, takes very little heat for it to start to coagulate or firm up. And this white here is underdone. Yeah. So that's a shame. Thank you. Hey there, Josh. Chef Michael. So let's take a look at the muffin. Nice golden brown on the outside. Just a tad on the darker side on the back. And just look at those gorgeous little air bubbles. Fabulous. The blood pudding is lacking just a little bit of color on the outside. Let's see how it uh, tastes. You're lucky. I thought given the outside of that sausage, I would have thought it would have been a slightly bit underdone. But that heat must have just percolated through just for you. Look at that. That says good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Good luck, buddy. Hi there, Rogine. Hi there, Chef. Which aspect of my English breakfast gave you the biggest challenge, Rogine? The blood pudding. You had that pan way too high in temperature, and that sausage just burst. But on the bright side, gorgeous golden brown color to the English muffin. Light, fluffy, that is a great English muffin. And this egg, perfectly done. Mm. Perfect texture. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, Chanel. Hey, chef. Let's start off with the English muffin. Good golden brown color. It's a little more dense. The little air holes are just a little on the small side. Mm. Your blood sausage looks a little slimmer. Did you squeeze any of the filling out? Just. It just came out came on its own. Certainly not perfect. Two eggs, sunny side up. Let's see if that egg yolk is just the way I like them. Just a little on the overside. Thank you. It's hard for me to gauge who's the best right now because everyone has faults. Making three breakfasts takes a wide range of skills. There was one home cook who created a trio of dishes that would make all three of us jump out of bed. Congratulations, Chrissy. <laughs> Please take off your apron, head to the gallery. I'm top five. It feels too good to be true. Josh, Rogine, and Chanel. You all performed admirably, but each of you made mistakes. We had to carefully weigh all the missteps on your plates. It was a very difficult decision for us, and sadly, we feel we have to say goodbye to. Rogine. Josh, the overall quality of your three breakfasts put you ahead just by a hair. And Chanel, your kanji just managed to save you. You can both take off your aprons and head up to the gallery. Dude. It's okay, man. <laughs> Don't worry. Surviving my first pressure test, definitely a sigh of relief. I'm really grateful that the judges see something in me. I absolutely need to step up my game. 
We're gonna start with this hot rock bowl. We're gonna oil it. You wanna make sure it gets all the way around so the rice doesn't stick and so that you create this nice crust that everybody loves in bibimbap. And then the rice and then all the veg. The chopped suey and the bibimbap have so much ingredients. Sauteed shiitake mushrooms, some fresh kimchi. All right, we will fry a soft shell crab. It's gonna be really hard to replicate everything. Everything has to be absolutely perfect. You can see all the juiciest, so you know it's not overcooked. Once you start hearing it crackle, you can add your egg yolk and then soft shell crab. Oh. Bimbap. The final dish is the most popular dish in this restaurant. It's also Eric's winning dish for Master Chef Canada, season one. It is a lobster chow mein. So we're making Eric Chong's winning dish from season one. No pressure. So the key to using the wok is having it very, very hot. Oil, once you start seeing a touch of smoke, this is what we call wok hay, which is like wok smoke, wok air. That's what gives it the wok flavor. Then you have the noodles. You want to always keep it moving. You don't want to leave it in one spot or it'll burn. Eric is making manning a wok look so easy. Add the lobster. But the wok dish, the chow mein, is the hardest dish on tonight's menu. Now we can add the lobster sauce. This is where all the flavor is. You have 10 seconds to stir fry. You don't want to overcook it. Running the wok is really crazy. It looks like you have to use a ton of muscle, and I'm just really hoping that Jeremy doesn't ask me to run the wok. The so noodles on the bottom, then you garnish with some green onions. Don't forget, while you're cooking, Alvin will be at the pass watching your every move. Are you ready? Yes, chef! Let the games begin! Okay, go on. The red and blue teams now have just 20 minutes to prepare and practice the three dishes they'll be serving to the alumni for dinner. Go, go for it. Matthew's working on the bibimbap. The bibimbap has the most components and it's the trickiest to plate. Sean, do you need any help on prep? Good for now, man. Dr. Sean is on the chop suey station. I know he's gonna kill it because it's a lot of presentation on that one. Jeremy, how's it going over there, man? Pretty tough, man. I feel like the walk station is gonna be the hardest because it's very technical. So I'm gonna do it, but I feel like I may not be able to communicate with my team as much. How you doing, Jeremy? I think I'm doing a bit better. All right, keep it up, man. You good, guys? We're good, Mary. Good job. I'm on the chop suey. Veronica's gonna be working on the bibimbap. I hear the crackle. Oh. She knows what she's doing. You're doing a really good job. Thank you. Doing good, April Lee? Well, the walk is a lot harder than Eric made it look, that's for sure. I've never made food similar to this before, ever. How did I end up on the walk? Use one hand, okay? One because hand. all you have to do is slide like that, okay? That's all, okay? okay? Alvin's giving him a few pointers on how to use that walk, because that's gonna be a really tough piece of equipment to use. My right hand, no. Alvin? I don't care what okay. hand you use. Okay, that's a right hand walk. If you okay. turn it around, it's a left hand walk, okay? Well, I can tell you, mastering a walk is not something you learn in hours. It's something you learn in months and years. I am astonished how fast they really picked it up. Are you okay? Yeah. You're gonna do great. I get it, I get it right there. I get there. it right there. April Lee is strong and determined, and she is not gonna give up. Good luck, Jeremy. Good luck. Okay, everything's looking great. You good, April Lee? I'm good. You know, what I like to see is Mary. She is up front there, right in the middle of it, watching every dish go out. How many of you cook, Veronica? After this one, I need to do one more, and then I'm caught up. OK. Red team, I want two more chow mein. Yes, chef. April Lee, two chow mein. Yes, Mary. There is so much pressure being team captain. You're doing amazing, OK? Yeah. I'm just trying to keep it clear in my head what needs to go out and that none of our dishes are going out poorly. Two chops, do we have? All right, very nice. <laughs> Ferris, table five. One chow mein blue team, one chow mein red team. Do it now. Yes, chef. Hey, what do you say? Yes, chef. I hear Alvin talking to us, and whenever he's saying anything, I would always say, yes, chef. Blue team, I want three yes. bibimbap. Yes, chef. And I don't hear anything from Jeremy, because he's just so zoned out at the walk. How are you doing, Jeremy? Jeremy, how are you doing? In terms of leadership right now, i got to tell you, the blue team seem to be quiet. Well, and, uh, Jeremy's on the walk, so he's got his back to the entire kitchen, and he has no idea what's going in and out of his station. I don't get it. Blue team, one lobster. Say yes, chef. Yes, chef. Got some salt. Thank you. Red team, I want one more chow mein. April Lee? Yo, two more. Thanks, Mary. Look at these women. They're strong, they're confident. They're giving the guys a run for their money, I can tell you that much. Doing okay, Veronica? Doing great. 
Get the Chamings out. Get the Chamings out. One Chaming coming up, Mary. Number 12. Guys, we're doing so well, OK? April Lee, you're kicking so much blood. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Here you go, Chef. Two Chamings. Did you taste it? I did. Good. Service, please. Season two Master Chef winner David George is in the middle of sampling both teams' chow mein dishes when Claudio pays his table a visit. How you doing? Good, How Chef. Good. So, what do you think of the food so far? I pulled a giant piece of uh, cartilage out of my mouth, so that's never appetizing. So, other than that, it, flavors are on point. So, well, listen, right we're gonna get you a fresh plate okay. and redo this. Thank you. Guys, I want to watch this. I have some bad news. It's actually really bad news for the red team. David George found a piece of cartilage in his dish. Yes. Mary. Yes, Chef. This I'm... is absolutely unacceptable. I'm so sorry. I know, and I'm so sorry. April Lee just served David George, season two winner, lobster with cartilage in it. I'm very, very disappointed. Come on, get it right. Make sure you check it. Refire? Yeah, another refire. Nope. Come on, Red Team, you're behind, come yeah, on. Chef, I just gotta make sure this blocks. You're behind, right. come on. One minute, Chef. If a lobster gets sent back again, it's all over. Good girl. One. Okay, this lobster looks great. We've got two up. That's the replay. Service, please. Number three. You're doing amazing, April Lee. David, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you, Chef. Can you understand how this can happen? being in that kitchen. I can. We know what they're going through. You're just trying to do your best and as fast as possible. No disrespect, they're doing an amazing job. All right. I hope you enjoy this. Thank Take you. care. The most popular dish at R&D, Eric's famous lobster chow mein. They look pretty similar. So we'll try the red teams first. The lobster is cooked perfectly. The noodles, on the other hand, seem to be overcooked. Right. Let's try the blue one. This lobster album looks raw. It's a little under. I mean, that is raw lobster. The Japanese it's raw. translucent there. Raw lobster, mm. overcooked noodles. What's worse, both unacceptable. Neither makes a perfect dish. Baby Bob coming up on the red team's pass. Good, very nicely done. Thank you, Chef. Matthew, how many more BB maps do we have? I have one more and then I'm done. Yo, did you test me these guys? Not yet. Two more chow mein, chef. Service! As service winds down, Claudio takes one last tour of the dining room to get the alumni's final thoughts. It's got excellent flavor, nice texture to it. They're doing really well. Good evening, ladies. How are you enjoying everything? Um, we weren't too happy with lobster chow mein. OK. It was really chewy, and there was actually a shell left on the piece of the lobster. Like, this was a leftover dish. Alba's not going to be happy about this one. Chef Alvin, yes. this is a complete and utter disaster. They found a lobster shell. The lobster was beyond overcooked. That's bad. What team was that? Please, please, please. Don't beat the red team. That's this was the blue team. Blue team. Jeremy, Jeremy, yes, Jeremy. Lobster chow mein. Look, lobster overcooked. Noodles on the cook. Yes, Come on, I want everything has to be perfect. Do it again, right now. Okay, do chef. it, do it. You know what they said? What? Describe it as leftovers. Bad, that's bad, that's really bad. You gotta get that guest a new plate of chow mein. It's gonna be down to the wire. Jeremy, come on. Last Let's one, that's the last one. You're behind, come on. Last order of chow mein. Look better than the last one. Nice one, nice one. Woo! Service, please. Number 12. All right, you're done. Thank you, chef. We just took over one of the busiest restaurants in Toronto. I got so much lipstick on your toe! <laughs> what an amazing experience. I can't believe we pulled it off. Yesterday, you took over R&D. Deciding on a winner was not easy. Both teams experienced big highs and lows. But there was one team that took the lead. The team that is now safe from elimination is... The red team. <laughs> yes! The girls beat the boys. This is the best win ever. Thank you, Mary. Congratulations! Thank, Thank you. you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Please head up to the gallery. Get back to Congratulations. Congratulations. I love walking up to the gallery. It 
feels so good knowing that I don't have to do whatever crazy thing the judges are going to make the blue team do. It's the final round of the Master Chef Canada finale. Taya is constructing her coffee dessert. I need to make sure my plating is absolutely beautiful. But Trevor's ice cream is far from frozen. The ice cream is the star. I need to get this ice cream really cold. He's only got four minutes left. My only option is liquid nitrogen. It's a crazy gamble. I've never worked with it before. Let's give it a shot. Trevor is really thinking like a chef and adapting to the situation. Using liquid nitrogen is always risky, but it's either try it or serve as soup. Brilliant. Two minutes. You only have two more minutes left. Two minutes. Come on, girl. You can do it. I'm going to do a little mousse. Oh, my God. That looks amazing. That ice cream and that liquid nitrogen, it's got to come out right about now. Otherwise, it will be like a rock. One problem turns into another. The mold is so frozen that it's actually rock solid. I can't get the ice cream out of the mold, but I got to keep pushing hard to get this dessert. So Trevor's just come back from the equipment room with a torch. So now he's heating the bottom of that silicone mold, which should release the ice cream. He is not giving up, and neither is she. Taya has just bought her ice cream from the blast freezer, and she has one minute to make canals and get it on the plate. This is so much pressure, but I gotta shake it off because I need to make the best damn dessert that these judges have ever tasted. There we go. Ariel's coming out. Yay! Wow, he's doing it. Now, it's time to taste your third and final course. Please follow us into the banquet room to present your dishes. I put my heart on this plate. Good or bad, I stand by my plate today. I never in a million years would have imagined I could do the things that I've done here. It's mind-blowing. Before we taste your desserts, we'd like to tell you how your culinary stories have unfolded this far. Trevor, we loved your fish and chips and how you elevated it. The octopus was perfectly cooked and beautifully flavored. Thank you, Chef. Now, Taya, your Mexican street corn appetizer. It was incredible. Oh, thank you. That plate looked beautiful. Not just your best plate, by one of the best looking plates we've seen in this competition. And now for the entrees. Trevor, your lamb two ways was plated flawlessly. Your lamb tongue was perfectly cooked. The sauce was excellent, but we certainly could have done with a touch more of it. And Taya, your pork belly and pork tamale dish featured those big, bold South American flavors that I love. Thank you, chef. But the tamale bowl was a little bit undercooked and was just a tad on the dry side. So there you have it, two culinary stories. And we can't wait to find out how they end. Trevor made a better competitor out of me because I had to push myself really hard to compete with him. Hearing Taya's feedback on her dishes, it makes me really nervous. Her flavors are in your face and bold, and I had more subtle flavors. It could go either way. Trevor, please describe your dessert. What you have in front of you is a chocolate mint gelato with a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone and a creme fraiche whip. Let's try this dessert. You know, this dish really resonates with me. The ice cream is obviously a bit hard. It's a bit too frozen. That's a common mistake when you're working with liquid nitrogen. However, having said that, the flavor that you have is divine. Great balance of chocolate and mint. Really playful. I love it. Thank you very much. Great flavors. That big, bold, 
bitter chocolate with fresh poppy mint, which is a perfect combination. You have the balance just right. In the ice cream, I taste a bit of salt, and that's a very good idea. That little bit of salt brings out that chocolate even better. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you, Chef Alan. All right, Taya, tell us about your dessert. My dessert is a play on a cafe de olla. So I did a orange cake with a sponge toffee, dark chocolate mousse, and a cinnamon ice cream. Mm. Watching the judges is like the worst and the best all wrapped together because you really don't know what they're thinking. It's like an emotional roller coaster. Taya, first thing, I gotta compliment you on your plating. Thank you, Chef. You've been able to create a great sense of balance, proportion, color to create this one dessert. And that's, that's not easy. The flavors are classic Taya. They're big, they're bold. There's a lot of flavor happening on one plate. Taya, you got a lot of lovely elements on this dish. Ice cream, cinnamony, smooth, creamy. The caramel is buttery, but what's the name of the dessert? Cafe de Olla. I did not get the cafe. But overall, great job. But I would have preferred a little bit more coffee in my coffee dessert. Understood, Chef. Pea, Trevor, you did an extraordinary job tonight. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. We need some time to discuss your culinary journey. This is never easy. You have to take so much into account when you're making big, weighty decisions like this. It has to be a culmination of the entire journey of the three-course meal. And this one is tough. I poured my heart into this, my soul. I want to win so bad. The question is, which out of the two home cooks told a cohesive story? I am so close to my food dream, and I'm just dying to find out. We have to choose somebody. And I think that somebody had a better culinary story. The home cooks are racing to finish an iconic comfort dish, fried chicken with mashed potatoes and gravy. The person with the weakest dish will be eliminated. Michael's just added a copious amount of flour to his gravy. It's more lumpy that way. Michael, sieve that stock out, brother. Yeah, it's going to be through a sieve. It should work out fine. Perfect. Yeah, consistency looks good. I like it. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left. So it looks like they've got the chicken just going into the fryers right now. Oh, it's hot. The breast, if it's deboned, will cook very, very quickly, almost like a chicken finger. Never fried a whole breast. The timing's gonna be key for that. The thighs and the drumstick, if the bone is still left on, it's gonna take a little bit longer to cook, probably about another five to six minutes. If you undercook it and you cut open a piece of chicken and there's still blood at the core of it or yeah. up against the bone, yeah. it is the worst. Michael's got his first piece out already. Why is he doing the chicken in different stages? I'm frying my chicken one at a time just so that they don't get mangled in between each other and they have different cook times. I took one of my drumsticks and I did check the cook on it and it was a bit raw. So I left the chicken in longer. Two minutes, two minutes. You should be starting the plate by now. Delicious fried chicken, mashed potato, and gravy. And you have to get it to the front before time's up. Lynn, Lynn, Lynn you're, you're on fire. fire. Lynn, you're on fire. Oh. Wow. Fire, no fire, there's no way I'm going home. As long as my food wasn't on fire, I'm good with it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Wow. Our plates look so similar. Standing in front of our plates, I can tell my plate is really strong. I'm pretty nervous. There's uh, six of us left, and by the end of this, there's going to be five. Hey there, Lynn. Has your fried chicken dinner turned out as you'd hoped? Yes, chef. What is the seasoning that you put into your crust, your dredge? Oregano, thyme, rosemary, cayenne pepper, paprika, salt and pepper. That's exactly what I want to hear the crispiness of it. 
I'm gonna try the thicker piece of breast. You happy with that? I'm very happy with that, Chef. That's definitely cooked. You can see some of the steam coming out of it now. It's moist and glistening right there. Yes, Chef. I think it's very good. Thank you. It's got a great crunch to it. The flavor of the dredge does not overpower the delicate flavors of the chicken. Great execution on the chicken breast, that's for sure. Thank you, Chef. And the gravy. A little on the blonde side, maybe? A little lighter? Yes, Chef. That's the way my daughters like their gravy. But the taste is there, Chef. And you're right. The taste is there with that gravy. It's light, it's sweet. The mashed potatoes, however, there's definitely some lumps in there. Yes. Not as smooth as I would have hoped. Not bad for 45 minutes. Definitely comfort food cuisine. Thank you. Lynn. Yes, chef. Dark meat is always the most difficult to get right. What do I expect to see when I cut into this? I expect you to see juices flowing out, nice and succulent and tender with a crispy exterior. That, to me, is perfectly cooked. Wow, it's tender, it's juicy, it's well seasoned. That is a piece of perfect fried chicken. Thank you, chef. My daughters would be very proud of me right now, so it feels amazing. Sabrina, so who would you cook this for? My brother, my brother-in-law, my boyfriend. Well, it looks good. Do you think this is perfectly cooked? I'm hoping it is. Wow. Yeah. You know that, eh? You can see how tender that is. Look at the juice is flowing out. What's in it? What did you do? Uh, buttermilk hot sauce as a bath, and then the dredge is cornmeal, flour, some paprika, oregano, cayenne, garlic, and onion powders. You got the seasoning, the right amount of spices, the crispiness. This is something I would have every day. Okay, I'm gonna try the drumstick. You happy with the way that's cooked? I'm really happy with the way that's cooked. I think you should be. You had a panic look on your face there for a second. It's good crunch. <laughs> hmm. That, Sabrina, is pure Southern comfort. Wonderful crunch. Beautiful. Did you try the gravy? I did. And you were happy with it? I was, Chef. Hmm. That surprises me. I find the taste to be a little unpleasant. Maybe it's just a little too much of the roux. I don't get that light, sweeter note. The flavors are not quite right for me. I'm terrified of losing. I'm scared of failure. I think it's why I set my standards for myself so high. This looks amazing. It sounds amazing, it's very crispy. Now for the true test. Is this dish cooked properly? I hope it is. <laughs> Look at that, it's moist. I squeeze a little bit and see some of the juices kind of collecting there. That's perfection. Hmm. Michael, that's amazing. That chicken breast, it doesn't get much better. Let's taste this piece of chicken leg. All right, home cooks, it's time for you to demonstrate another classic French technique. Are you primed to see what it is? Yes, yes. yes. You look terrified. Just need to know what it is. This time, your survival depends on... A butter-basted steak, perfectly cooked to medium rare. The French term for this technique is arrosé. We're looking for a beautifully browned crust, a tender pink interior, with just a hint of red. This is what I'm looking for, exactly. You got it? Yes, yes chef. chef. 
I make butter basted steak fairly often, so I have a really good shot at making it up to the balcony after this wrap. The first thing I do is get my pan searing hot. One of the most important aspects of this dish is getting a beautiful sear on the steak. I'm very happy that it's steak and not a French omelet again. <laughs> Two minutes to bring the pan up to high heat, eight minutes to cook, and five minutes to let your steak relax, and you'll be cooking a perfect medium rare. I'm extremely focused, <laughs> just trying to get this done in a timely manner so I have more than enough time to rest my steak. It's very important when you season meat to be liberal because a lot of that seasoning will be lost to the pan. I have to amp this salt up and butter. I do not want to let the judges down. I'm secretly rooting for Jonathan. He's an amazing, charismatic guy and has a good soul. I really do want this, but I'm also missing my family. My mom taught me how to cook. She was a single mother and raised my brother and I. And I want them to be proud of what I'm going to put on the plate today. All the seasoning's been wiped off of Jonathan's. Mm. He's wiping all the seasoning off. Smell, 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 smell. Just waiting for my oil to smoke, I wanted to rip my hair out. Oh, come on. When the steak goes in, you want to hear it sizzle. If you don't get that sizzle, you are in trouble right out of the gate. I love the intensity of the pressure test. I can see the fear in their eyes, and it's kind of exciting to see. I know Marissa is a badass with steaks, so I'm really happy to be up on the balcony because the difference between having a perfect steak and being underdone or overdone is really minute. I've got adrenaline going through my veins. This is it. I want to be up there with my buds. I, I need to be up there. I don't want to wait any longer. I'm pretty confident in Marissa because she's into proteins and the rest are a bit iffy. You want the exterior of that steak to caramelize. Add yep. more butter, baste and baste to keep it moist. Everything they do matters here. The way they season, the way they sear, the way they rest, everything matters. Hey, Jonathan, that's too much butter. Look at Nadia's pan. It is spewing off lots of big smoke there. That concerns me. She could be burning her herbs. She could be burning the steak. She could yeah. be burning the garlic. One second can ruin my dish. If I do not get the heat right in this pan, I'm done. Five minutes, five minutes left. Make sure you leave enough time to rest your steak. The sear on the outside is perfection. I just want to see a beautiful pink center. I lay my steak down very carefully, and I just wait. Patience is a virtue. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. I'm feeling very unsure. Like, here's unsure, and I'm like, here. I'm only going to find out if I nailed it when the judges slice that bad boy open. Jonathan, what is the color that you're trying to achieve in the center of the steak? The medium rare. You miss some of the caramelization here. You can see that. See how it's gray? Yeah. See that? Let's make the cut and see if you actually made the cut. Boom. Look at that. That's perfect. It's a thing of beauty. Thank you. How's it taste? Hmm. Could use more salt. But overall, really solid performance. Thank you. I'm thrilled. I feel a little bit more confident. Marissa. Chef Michael. You a steak lover? I am a steak lover. I actually heard you have a dog by the name of Porterhouse. Porterhouse is my dog. <laughs> Interesting. And are you pleased with the outcome using this classic French technique? Yes, I am. I achieved a nice sear on all sides of the steak. So let's see how you did on the cook.
very good. I think it could have been pushed just a little bit more with the seasoning. You lose a lot of salt and pepper when you're cooking and basting. But not bad at all. Just wish it was a porterhouse. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Chef. Nadia. Hello, Chef Alvin. Pan was smoking. You cook a lot of steak? I have, but usually I do it on my grill in the middle of a park. Well, how do you think you're done? I'm hoping that it's a beautiful medium rare. How did you know it's a medium rare? I used a small pin. I just put it in and then I just put it together. That's in. right, your most sensitive part of your body, right there. Where did you get that trick from? A wonderful chef. I, I didn't recall telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, very good caramelization. Thank you, chef. So, the moment of truth. Please open it. <laughs> you are killing me right now. <laughs> Seems good. So, did you season it? Yeah, definitely. I was liberal with the salt. It's nicely seasoned. You know what I like about you, Nadia? Tell me. You don't do things halfway. Thank you, Chef Alvin. I'm feeling pretty happy. There is a very good chance that I'm going up to the gallery now. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Like, my legs feel like they're gonna go, and I have to think with every ounce of my being, don't fall over. I just, I just have to keep going. Hi there, Jen. How are you feeling? I'm nervous, as usual. I like what I'm seeing. Great even caramelization all over. Well, let's see how you did. That looks terrific. Thank you. Nice even color, nice blushing pink with a touch of red in the center. Nicely seasoned. <laughs> well done, Jen. Nice job. <laughs> It's about as close to a photo finish as I think you're ever going to see when it comes to full steaks. Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, I might have a good chance here. Possibly. I don't want to battle with one other person. It's going to be down to that last grain of salt. That's how close it is. I feel a little bit nervous, but excited at the same time. Nobody knows what to expect. Uh, uh, my stomach's in knots. All right, let's do it. You are four of the top eight home cooks in the country. And you proved it with this challenge. This decision came down to the finest of details. Taking everything into account, two home cooks had the slightest edge. And they are... Nadia. And... Jen. Thank you, Chef. Nicely done. Please head up to the gallery. I might run. I'm so happy. I'm going up to the gallery, and I just made the top seven. Yay! I'm safe. I cooked a perfect steak. <laughs>